It is the most popular Python HTML parser and it will come up in every web scraping conversation you ever have. But for me, I think it's time that I left Beautiful Soup 4 behind. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why and what to. There's two options I'm considering, but I think you're gonna like the second one better. So make sure you stick around. So why would you want to leave the most popular HTML parsing uh, package ever made? Well, for me, it comes down to the use case that I'm doing. So I'm now looking for something that is lightweight, super fast, and very, very focused and specific. All I want to do is pull the information out of the elements of the HTML document that I'm trying to scrape. I don't need anything else. I don't need any extra features. All I want is something that is really focused in on doing that one job. Given the fact that I almost exclusively use CSS selectors now as well, and I don't like the way that actually find and find all actually deals with the selectors, I think it's a bit counterintuitive, leads me down to a much more, as I said, focused path I'm looking at something a bit different. Now, I know that the speed of something is often considered as well. I've never really had an issue with the fact that Beautiful Street 4 is a bit slower, um, but generally speaking, the faster the better because you never know when you might need to scale up that program that you've been working on and having to substitute one out for the other would be a real pain. But before we get to that, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. So Brilliant is a website and app that's focused on hands-on interactive learning. So I've been doing the algorithms course on there and I think it's been fantastic. And you know what, just 30 minutes or so, just a little bit every day really makes a difference in the way that you can actually see things, you understand how they work. And all of this not only teaches you algorithms, but it also sharpens up your critical thinking and your problem solving skills. This is the best way to learn hands-on. If you've ever asked anyone how to learn to code, they'll tell you, you need to sit down and write code. That's how you do it, do projects. And this is the same principle. But maybe if algorithms isn't your thing, there's a data science course that will take you all the way up through the foundations, through statistics, up to neural networks, or maybe you just wanna do regular maths and science. It's all there, there's thousands of lessons, there's more content being added monthly, and it's all in the same style. It's all hands-on, interactive, which makes it so much more fun. And when you're having fun, you're learning so much more. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, go ahead and use the link in the description below, brilliant.org slash John Watson Rooney. And the first 200 people to use that link will also get 20% off an annual premium membership. Thanks for Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. So the first option that I've been looking at is called Parcel. Now this is basically Scrapey's HTML parser. So if you've ever written a web scraper using the Scrapey framework, you'll be familiar with this. The downside for me is that it still works on top of LXML, which is the same as Beautiful Suit 4, but I feel like it is a little bit lighter weight and I actually do like the way that the syntax works, although it may look a little bit different, a little bit confusing to others with those double uh, colon and the text, etc. I'm okay with that and I think it works quite pretty well. I like the fact that it's CSS selectors specifically straight away out of the box or you can specify XPath just by putting in those two different words if you need it to. And I like the way that it works in general. I've used Scrapey a lot too, so it's very familiar to me. So it was no problem for me just to jump in and out, not an issue. I guess though it didn't win out because it just wasn't really different enough in a way for me to warrant using it. Although, you know, if it's there and I'm given the option, I probably would still pick it over BS4 now just because of the extra familiarity that I've got from using Scrapey so much. So the second one then, the one that I'm considering using mostly myself now and the one that I suggest that you guys go ahead and give a go to, what makes it so much more special? Well, I think the fact is, and the main reason that I like it the most is that it is built on top of a C package called Modest, which is specifically designed for passing HTML documents. It's a wrapper on top of that for Python written in C Python, which means it's gonna be super fast. Even though I mentioned that speed isn't a massive issue, I still feel like if you've got that scalability, that means your program could go anywhere if you need it to, is something definitely worth having. It's the only one of the three that isn't on top of LXML, which is in Python. So I think that makes it a little bit more interesting to me and a little bit more uh, exciting to get behind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop over to the computer and I'm going to just show you how it, how it works and how to use it so you guys can make up your own mind and see if you think it will fit in well for you. 
Okay, so we're just going to take this one, which was the scrapey parser, the parcel one, and we're going to change it into select OLX, just so you guys can see the difference in how it just approaches it and uh, maybe see how it works. So I'm going to remove this line and we're going to import in from select OLX dot parser. We're going to import the HTML parser. This is going to give us access to everything that we need. So we need to change this line. We need to remove this and we need to say uh, HTML parser. And we also don't need the text in here. We just need the response.txt like this. So the selectors are slightly different. It's pure CSS selectors. So we don't do this do uh, double colon text thing here with the dot get. We just do dot text. And this is just going to give us the text here. Uh, we just need to change this to CSS first. So this one actually has like a find and find all type with CSS, which will return the list and the CSS first, which will return the first selector. These are the two main ones that you'll find that you'll use. Uh, and it's, I think it's quite good to have it this way rather than having the dot get and dot get all at the end. Although I do see the use for that as well. So let's change this as well. So we want to leave it at CSS. This should work fine. Uh, for us because this is a straight up CSS selector. We need to tweak these though. We need to change this to CSS first and we just need to remove that dot text and change this dot get into text like this. Now to deal with the attributes is actually very similar except instead of attribute we're going to full word it here attributes. That's all we need to change. So let's go ahead and add this in here. There we go. So that should be it. So let's format this with black. Uh, there we go. Fantastic. Let's go back to the beginning of the line and let's try running it now. There we go. So we did indeed get the same information back. Uh, it works well. I like the selector. I like the fact that it's pure CSS selectors. I like the fact that there is um, no extra fluff around it. There's CSS for the list, CSS first for the individual selector for the element. Dot attributes will give you the get you the attributes from the list, and dot text will get you the text. All very straightforward, super to, super easy to use, and also pretty quick because it is that Cython, that C Python based on that C package modest. So that was it. That was the demo. What do you guys think? Do you think that this is something you can use? Are you interested in the fact that it comes from a C package and it using C Python and is a wrapper around that? Do you think that makes a difference to you? Are you a bit concerned about maybe using uh, a lesser known package? Is it going to be continued to be developed? Is it going to be continued to be supported? Given what it's supposed to do and the fact that it works so well at the moment, I think I'm going to start using this one full time now and see what happens and see where we get to. But do you know what? It's okay if you still want to stick with BS4. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just make sure you call it an HTML parser and not a web scraping program because it's not that. And don't try and compare it to Scrapey either because that's apples and oranges. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And also watch this video next, which you'll find equally as interesting.